Hi guys! Uh, today I'm going to show you how I do my placeholders. Now this is the finished product. Um, it's very simple, um, very easy to make. So um, if you guys ever want to replicate it or do something very similar, uh, go ahead. Um, I'm going to show you step by step what I do and hopefully it'll help you if you've always wanted to do placeholders in the past and weren't 100% sure how to do them. These were made with Photoshop, but of course you can do them by hand. It really is up to you. I just have shitty handwriting <laughs> and prefer to let the computer write for me because there's millions of fonts out there you can use. Um, also, I run out of ideas and creativity when I do them by hand. So yeah, uh, I will be showing you step by step how to do these and uh, stick around to find out. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop right now and I'm going to actually open up the template that I had previously done um, a few days prior to filming this and I had just named it placeholder. <laughs> so here I'm just explaining that I had put the background black and then copied the background and put that white and then shrunk that to make a border and then I'm just explaining that I have two texts for the name and then one text for the album. And to show you where I get my fonts from, um, I'm showing you uh, the Defont website, which is essentially just Defont.com. There are so many uh, font options on here, it's unbelievable, and they're all free, most of them. Uh, some of them have uh, a place where you can donate to the author. So to download them, it's really easy. You just click on the download button, it downloads straight to your download folder on PC, I'm not sure about Mac, and then you just open it with any unzipping program you have. I use WinRAR or WinRAR and then you just uh, unzip it to any folder that you'd like. I just unzipped it back to my download folder and then you just go to your download folder or wherever folder you put it in and find it. Now you're getting a sneak peek at my downloads folder which is a mess and then you right click on it and then just click install. So then your font will automatically install into Photoshop and you don't even need to restart Photoshop or anything like that, it just shows up in your text. And it's right there. So I am just showing you a few fonts while I try to find the original font that I used for the name. So as you can see I am in the calligraphy uh, tab I guess and there are loads and loads of options. You can even preview them to see if you need a certain word for it. So the one I used is Ghost for the name. And then here's me clicking on the wrong tab. <laughs> and then me realizing I clicked on the wrong tab and clicking on the right tab. So I went in the Fixed With one and Futurist Fixed is the one I used for the album name. So yeah, that is exactly the fonts I use and exactly where I got them from. So back in Photoshop I'm just highlighting the main name and writing Seiyu's name uh, just to show you how I did it. So I basically just kept the name and then the last name on top and then uh, moved the last name in correspondence to how the first name was. So there's an H there so I tried to move the Kim that's not overlapping the H and then I highlighted the album name and changed the album name as well um, and then I did this for every single one of them. It's not super time consuming if you keep your tabs on the side uh, so you can switch back and forth. I was doing one name at a time with all the different albums so yeah and then you just save it as a JPEG so here I am just going into my ace folder and then showing you the one I had already saved. So I'm not going to resave it. And then here I'm showing you how I'm printing, I'm preparing to print them. So I just make a new project that's exactly three of what I had wide, which is three by four. So it's eight. It's nine wide and eight high, so I can um, accommodate three wide and two high. 
So here I just basically select the whole thing and then drag and drop it in the other document, whatever, and then copy it how many times I need it. Um, to copy it, it's just Control J. I know there's a lot of shortcuts that you can use. Um, I haven't been saying any of the shortcuts right now just because I have to pack a lot of information in this one tiny voiceover and then save that as a JPEG as well. As you can see, I have a lot of them saved already. So I'm not going to resave that one. <laughs> and then after all of that is done, I am going to show you how to print it, which is basically just open and print. So I'm selecting all of them, and to select a large group, you select the first one, and then when you select the last one, you just press shift at the same time, and it'll select all of them in between those two. It makes your life much easier. So as you can see, I have a lot to print out. So now, before actually printing these, I am going to rotate them so that they are a portrait instead of landscape so that they fit on the paper. Now, this is me not liking the orientation and switching it. <laughs> not sure why. So again, there's a shortcut for that, Control-P. Not sure why I kept going into that tab. Beats me. And then you just print it. That should you didn't you didn't didn't need to do anything different to that. Just completely print it. So here is my little printer in my closet, doing the best that it can. Also, I just want to uh, mention that to print these, I'm printing these on cardstock, and um, it is best to use cardstock that is meant for printing. I have tried this with scrapbook cardstock before, and the ink does not dry. I left the placeholders out for a week to dry and at the end of the week they were still smudging on my thumb. So uh, it is best to use cardstock that is meant for printing and it, the ink will dry right away. You don't need to worry about it. You can just cut them and put them straight in your binder. Don't need to let them dry or anything like that. So you just do this with every single other one that you have to do. So again, just rotate it. So these are actually bigger than my actual the actual pockets in the nine pocket pages. These are three by fours, and I do explain later on in the video why I did them bigger. So um, don't worry if they seem big to you. They are, they are quite big. <laughs> so yeah. So now I had like thirty two to print. So yep, that is all I have for voiceover, Connie. I'll see you in um, filming, Connie, in three, two. One. So this is what they look like after they're all printed. So now what I used to do is, well before they used to be printed like exactly like a nine pocket page, I'd have three up there, three in the middle, and the three down here. And I would uh, cut away the sides so that they could fit in uh, my paper cutter which is very tiny <laughs> so like I couldn't cut off like the length part here with it but now I got a new paper cutter and it's bigger but I still don't want to use it for the sides here although it doesn't matter because I made these purposely bigger so um, these are actually three inches by four inches instead of two and a half by three and a half inches which is the standard size of a nine pocket sleeve just one <laughs> it's the standard size for that um because i was designing these and i didn't want a border because i still haven't figured out how to print it and then have the perfect measurements without a border i didn't really want a border so i purposely make them bigger so that i can cut along the border and then cut half an inch on every side and have it perfectly to two and a half by three and a half um, so I'm just going to do like I used to do and uh, cut uh, around the edges and stuff just to uh, be able to use the paper cutter more easily. Oh, 
Now this doesn't have to be precise because like I said, I'm cutting this border off. It's just so that you have smaller pieces to work with. Now again, if you do want to use a paper cutter, go right ahead. I just find that, like, well, it really doesn't matter at this point, but if you want precise cuts around these borders, I just find that um, sometimes a paper cutter doesn't cut exactly where it says it's gonna cut. <laughs> so, I had that problem when I used to do it the other way. Okay, so I cut the borders off of this whole pile right here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut these individually, and then after all of those are cut individually, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them again. Um, this process really isn't the best, so do whatever you want if you choose to follow some of my steps or something. Um, this is just how I find works best for me, but y'all, if you have any tips for me, Please let me know, because this is like me wasting a whole day right now. I just started making them last night, and now it's like the afternoon, and I'm still working at it. So, this is my new cutting thing. Um, <laughs> I got it for Christmas. The one I was previously using was this one, which still works really well, considering I've had it for four years. It's just... The bottoms got worn out, so every time I go to cut something, it's like extremely wobbly on my floor because I don't. This is the first time I've actually cut something on a table. I like to give myself back problems. Okay, so I had to assemble this because this handle actually didn't come on it, the screen part here. <laughs> this is like a warning for everybody out there who is either young or dumb like me. These are very sharp. Uh, please be careful when using any either guillotine or rotary cutting tool or any of the crappy ones you get at like Walmart or Target or anything like that. Um, because you can cut yourself even though you're like, ah, oh, nah, I'm not gonna cut myself. You can cut yourself because I just did. <laughs> but I grabbed the blade <laughs> while trying to affix this on. So yeah, not my smartest move, but I will learn. It's not like I don't have bunches of cuts already on my fingers from work, so what's one more gonna do? Okay, for these, I'm so not used to having the things at the bottom. These are three by four, and since while, well, while printing them on Photoshop, I didn't have to scale to fit the page because they were proportionate. It was working fine on the page without any clippage going on, so I didn't have to scale it. So they should be true to size. So if I go to three inches, I've got a bunch of paper over there. If I go to three inches over here, that should be, there's something, oh, I was gonna say there's something wrong, but no, I just didn't cut straight because who cuts straight? should be the right place to cut but like I said I can't cut 
So yeah, let's give it a try. So that was definitely not the right place to cut. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I like this. Also, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this product, just because maybe I'm used to my small ones. Look at how awful this cut. Um, thankfully, so what I'm gonna do, I am just going to take this monster out of here until I can play with it. And get comfortable with it, because it was a Christmas gift and I do intend on do intend on using it, but I guess using it on a video for the first time probably isn't a best idea. So I'm just gonna go with my scissors and just individually cut them like this. Because yeah. I do a much better job at cutting than my guillotine does. Alright, so I have cut them all individually and right now I'm going to separate them by binder so that when I cut them even smaller I can replace those in those piles and then I don't have to. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just, it's a pile and it needs to be smaller piles, you know? Yeah. Thank you. 
in order but at least they're separated by binder so god I'm missing a lot of cards <laughs> and that's only album cards <laughs> okay I'm actually gonna use this one it's just because I know I can do it fast with this one <laughs> so yeah I just need, it's been a while. And here we go. This is gonna be not completely the final product, but um, there's one more step after this, but this is essentially what my placeholders are gonna look like. I really wanted the no border because I found I love the border but I found that it kind of looked out of place with the rest of my fillers are all white so I kind of wanted something that fit in with that and doing them three by four and then cutting them down to two and a half to by three and a half felt like the safest way for me even though <laughs> I messed up a few times with the other uh, guillotine cutter um, they're not completely centered, but like nothing I do is completely centered anyways. So yeah, we're gonna continue. <laughs> Just cut myself. Coincidentally, this is the same thumb that I cut with my knife at work, like straight down here. See, if this was the other guillotine cutter, that would have cut straight through again. That's why you have to be careful. <laughs> so if you're not sure what I'm doing, is I'm cutting half an inch on each side. So I want this to be two and a half and three and a half instead. So what I go is I go two uh, and three quarters. And then three and three quarters and then two and a half and then three and a half basically that's what I do see this is not centered at all and it really doesn't matter it doesn't look as obvious that it's not centered if it doesn't have a border I found what I didn't like about this one lately is that this plastic is very sticky but not to the touch but to the paper so it makes turning them like I am right now pretty hard so yeah <laughs> here's a longer name to see how it looks I think it looks cool. I'm not completely done. I want to add a little splash of color. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna continue doing the rest and then I'll see you when I have all of them done. All right, so they're all cut. I have them all here. And I'll start with the in-flying binder because that's the binder I was using to test my light. Um, today is actually a different day from the when I was previously filming on and there's a big snowstorm well everybody says it's a big snowstorm but my drive home from work wasn't that bad <laughs> so um there's a snowstorm outside so the light in here kind of really sucks so I bought like a selfie light and there's a glare here but as far as I know it doesn't really affect the other cards well the cards inside so we'll see how it works if you guys hate it let me know but it's gonna be my uh, solution for now for how shitty the light is in my room. Okay, so um, I have them all here. Oh, all right. So um, I had previously mentioned I want to add a little bit of color. So I'm actually gonna be highlighting just this part with a highlighter. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't have any green, and I just tried blending the blue and the yellow together, and it kind of doesn't look that good. So I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to have to do without green, which sucks. There's so many that I want to do green. So this is me after filming, coming back into the living room and looking in the garbage and finding the green highlighter. <sighs> I'm really mad. So none of them have green because I knew there was a green in here. I knew it. I had like a vivid recollection of there being a green in here. I don't... Well, newer comebacks will have green. So yeah, I'm going to move this to the side here so that we can do this. Now, I think the color choices I'm going to do are kind of going to be like random. I wanted to try to match them to the cards, but some of them are probably going to be random. So yeah, I'll start off with then flying. I didn't really want to do that one blue. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I was thinking of doing lonely blue and oh my god. Whatever. It really doesn't matter. Teach me for doing something and filming at the same time. I have learned that I suck at highlighting. Okay. <laughs> and flying's done. I'm going to move on to my other top groups. Okay, this one has a bit of a glare at the bottom. There. So, this pile is here.
See, one of the reasons why I wanted green. The only two that I'm missing have a blue background. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. I had all of these Halo cards, except for these ones. So I hate myself for selling them. Why did I sell them? Because I'm an idiot. Now that they've disbanded pretty much. <laughs> Missed them so much. So I didn't do horizontal placeholders for these just because I didn't feel like it. Oh, for this one I actually need a new page. I don't really have any white papers to fill the rest for now. That's for their new album. <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I lost this one. I'm a bit pissed at myself. I didn't lose the card, I lost the placeholder. I don't know where it went. Either I didn't print it or I lost it somewhere. So I didn't do any placeholders for unit cards, um, so I'm going to have to just put a white paper there.
Again, that's a unit card. More unit cards. Alright, that's it for this binder. Next up, I'm going to do my other groups that I clicked. It's the same size as the other one we just did, but it feels fuller. <laughs> okay. So I know Six Sense has two different versions. Uh, one's orange and one's red. Um, so for me to know which one I want to put where, I'm going to do one pink and one orange. Okay, Chanmi. Aoi finally has a new album. So this is red and blue. I don't know which one's the red and which one's the blue. Whatever. IDs here so that all the selfie cards are together. Mm. Of course that has a green background. I'm gonna use yellow. The lonely dia card I'm missing. Sold that card. I said never mind Chinese names. Oh, right. The middle's a unit card again. I felt like the units didn't fit with what I was doing. Uh, third one. I keep missing sets for these. I'm so mad. I really just want to finish MXM. These are the only cards I'm missing. Oh, twice. So many placeholders for twice. That one. It's the stupid hands card.
Never mind Chinese names again. Oh my god, I'm almost out of frame. I'm so sorry. doing is ace so I kept ace for the end just in case that you guys didn't want to see it because I know a lot of my past videos have been really ace forward and not everybody collects or stands ace <laughs> so if you guys don't like ace you can click out I'll accept it <laughs> all right the last binder ace so um, I have ace pretty much um, separated by members just because they have they tend to have a lot of cards per album the only exceptions are the one where you get a full set so like uh, call in and tour cards and season's greetings and stuff like that will all be per set but album cards are per member <laughs> so um, ace actually have corresponding colors so that's how I'm gonna do it um, for Adventures in Wonderland, these two, oh, these two are, these two are actually going to be unit cards, but I don't, they didn't print any unit cards, so, yeah. There's going to be nothing there. Got it? Got it.
I'm really sorry about how the light sucks, but if you want to see the full Adventures in Wonderland cards. So that's how they look. Actually have this one on the way, but I don't know how I'm gonna mark the ones that are on the way yet. I also have this Chan one on the way. And that was the end of this how I do my placeholders video. My placeholders don't always look like this. Um, I switch it up. Sometimes I do them by hand, but that takes me even longer. And most, and most of the time when I'm done with them, I actually end up hating them. So um, yeah, I really like these ones. So I hope I can keep them for a while before I decide to change my mind. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.